There we go. Welcome to the Elevate Everyday podcast. Just had to free up some storage so that we could record this one. Uh, but we've got our first second appearance on the podcast. This is the first time I've invited a guest to come back on the Elevate Everyday podcast because I loved our first chat. So we got Brad Feinberg back on here. Uh, go check out the first episode if you haven't already. Um, we talked about a lot of cool stuff in that one. We, we talked about his kind of background. So this time we'll we'll have some new topics of conversation um, that we'll go into. But yeah, what what's new with you since the last time we talked, Brad? What's new with me? Um, I would say a lot of the same old, but always trying to make it better. You know, one of the things I've really been trying to grow right now is when you, I'm sure you've experienced this, when you work with individuals for a very long period of time, it tends to get redundant, which it should, because that's what builds consistency. And you know, that's like the foundation of a lot of like a good program. I, you know, everybody's looking for like the new thing. And it's like, I'm sorry, new things are based off of the old things that work. So, but I've been really trying to give more value in what I'm doing. Um, and that's actually been a fun challenge, you know, really trying to, you know, see how you can take, you know, people that you've been working with for a long time to the next level. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's kind of what's been new for me. Yeah. And I, I like that, man. And I think that's, that's something, and, you know, I'd like to get your, your background on this, but that's something I feel like even as coaches, we have to do that for ourselves, right. To, to keep ourselves interested and, and motivated. It's not like we're just constantly motivated as coaches. I think that's a, a stigma that people think like, oh, you're a coach. You just stay motivated. You're, you've got this unending discipline, <laughs> right? But like, we, we've got to use the same tactics to keep us going too. So like, yeah. I, I, that'd be a cool thing to start with. Like, what are you doing sure. differently for yourself that you feel like is helping you stay on track and take things to the next level? Well, I, I always think it's about the goal. So when I... When I see myself getting unmotivated, which in all honesty is like 95% of the times, I don't, I don't know if we said this on last call. I feel like we may have talked about it, but like I, there are most, most days I wake up and in all honesty, now I'm waking up at like 3, 3.30 a.m. Wow. Um, just because of how things have turned. And I don't recommend that at all. That's not like, it's just, it's gotten earlier now, which <laughs> sucks. But most days I just like, I just stare at my shoes or I just stare at like, you know, uh, my clothes or whatever. And I'm like, I just don't want to do this at all. Um, I feel like that. But, too. <laughs> yeah. And it's cause it's, cause you know, you know, it's how it's going to go. You know that what you get through the day. So, so it's like, okay, you're like, in my head, it's like, I'll do this workout. I'll, I'll, I'll eat my meals. I'll do whatever working, whatever. Um, but then, you know, when you go to sleep, it's, you got to do it all over again. Right. And it's like, you have to get through that pain and uncomfortability of the workout yeah. because I don't care what anyone says, working out has highlights of greatness, but during it, it absolutely sucks. Like, <laughs> like going to failure, like that is not fun. Like, yeah. like <laughs> unless you truly love pain, like it's, it's not fun. Yeah. Or it's like, you know, doing sprints or doing cardio when it's now here in the desert it, it, in the morning, it's freezing cold. Yeah. So it's like, for me, I always, I always try to stay aware of like my goals and like what I really want. And I keep what I do now um, is I'll like, I'm, I'm thinking about like what I want, but I think of like my 80 year old version of myself. Yeah. Like I picture him, he's got like a long white beard, you know, he's got some white hair and he's just standing there and I look at him and I'm like, would you, would you give up right now? Like, would, would you give in, you know, or before when I was talking about like with, with the addiction, you know, it's like, would you give in to this feeling? Yeah. And it's like, I'm like, no, he just, he wouldn't, he would just suck it up. He would just do it. And that's what gets me like, like even talking about that right now, I get goosebumps feeling about that. And that's what it's like, okay, I'll put on my damn shoes and let's do this. Well, yeah. It's so like, it's like really, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say like that, that 80 year old version of you is, would be looking back and be like, 
I remember how amazing I felt at the time. You better suck that shit up and <laughs> and finish that. Yeah, and it's exactly. It's like I don't now when I and I, maybe it's because I'm getting older. Uh, I understand I'm still young, but it's like you know I'm not 20 anymore. Like when you're 20, you're you're you know you're running your body into the ground. But now it's like I really think about my legacy and what I want to achieve. And really a legacy is just like for my family and that I want to have. Yeah. And it's like, he would not let them down. Right. He would not, he would, he would go through the pain. He would suck it up. He would just do it. And then that's what gets me motivated. Okay. So that that's what I'm really, I'm like really focusing on like long term, like 50 <laughs> years down the line type of vision stuff. <laughs> Expanding your time horizon. That's something Alex Hormozzi always talks about where it's like if you can like really expand your time horizons then it it just opens your mind up and opens up your perspective to like you know what you're capable of and like you know kind of your why behind things so i, I think that's that's an interest i haven't thought that far ahead in my 80s for my fitness goals so that's 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 a good yeah. i'm gonna have to noodle on that for a little bit well yeah i i think about it too it's like i don't want to be strapped to a wheelchair or a bed yeah. like when i'm older it's like i literally want to play right up until the day that i die for sure. It's like, I understand, you know, things can happen. There are things always happen that we can't control, but it's like in, in, in my control, I am, I am playing, I'm sprinting literally until the day that I die. I am deadlifting literally until the day that I die. Oh, yeah. To me, that's fun. It's like, people always talk about like lifespan. It's like, I don't give two you know, shits about lifespan. I care about play span. Yeah. It's like, you can have a long lifespan, but the last 10 years, you're, 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 it's horrible. Or it's like your mental health goes or whatever it is. It's like, and I always think of my grandfather, he, he was, he was a, a war vet. Uh, he ran multiple businesses. Uh, he owned buildings in Philly. Um, you know, he, he did a lot of epic stuff, but he swam every single day of his life. He, he stayed active and like, literally only the last couple months of his life was when his mind started to go. And then he just went. Yeah. And it was like, that to me is like his entire life. He looked back and he just, you know, he, his play span was right up until the end. So to me, that's, that's what I'm fighting for now. For sure. That That's a beautiful perspective, man. I like that play span over lifespan. I like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I saw you, you recently like won some sort of like UFC fitness competition or something like that yeah. what, what was that about <laughs> yeah it's uh, um ufc fit um they actually they just they just shut down over here so i don't know if it's happening anymore <laughs> but uh they do they do like their um the fittest type of comp best way to show is like their version of a crossfit comp okay. it's not that but listeners can understand that yeah. um and so this was regionals so in the nevada area or the las vegas area excuse me, we had a competition and it was, you know, your, kind of your standard stuff, do a workout as fast as you can, or as many reps or things like that. Um, so yeah, I went in and I, I kicked ass and it felt great. Nice. Um, what I loved about it was that I used to do this. I used to compete in CrossFit regularly hmm. um, when I was younger, in my twenties. Um, and when I, when I left rugby, that's when I went into that. Cause for me, mentally, the drive competing for something, it, it like filled that void. Yeah. And I remember like every competition morning, I would have my morning routine. I would get up, be like, you know, like, just like most athletes, they'd be freaking out or whatever it is. I remember I woke up this morning being at that morning, being 35, I guess it was now I am. Yeah. Um, being 35 i woke up totally cool <laughs> and i was like i'm good i i didn't have like ritual i had to do yeah and i just went like my and it's it's i now truly get where why experience is so damn important because mm -hmm. it's just like my body just knew what to do it's just like oh competition we're good and this was from years of competing yeah. So that really had me realize it's like there's something magical that happens when you tr and you are always in like a competitive, a, con a proper competitive environment. Yeah. It was just like I woke up and there was like 
my heart rate was like this. It was like, <laughs> It was, and then I went in and I crushed, like I, I, I did really well and it felt good. Cause I was like the older guy there yeah. and I'm beating out these younger dudes. So I was like, all right, this is good. There you so, go. But yeah, that's what it was. Some that's regional cool. comp. That's cool, man. Yeah. I recently just signed up for a powerlifting competition nice. um, and yeah, I'm kind of getting that, that bug and I, I can completely resonate with you. It's like, man, you just get that feeling you're, like you're just excited for something again, like oh. competitive atmosphere. But yeah, I, I'm curious to see if I have that same <laughs> level of just chillness when, when I, when I compete, I don't know. I'll probably be hyped up on. I, I think you will, or I really think you may notice a difference, like, especially if you used to compete earlier yeah. and then now it's just, there's just like when, when it's ingrained into your system and you do it over and over and over, it's just like your body just turns on. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, of course, there, of course, going in there, I was still like, you know, had that nervous anxiousness. And it was normal, but it was like compared to the past, it was yeah. like total. It was like night and day. And I just, I there was no doubt in my mind that I wasn't gonna that like I wasn't gonna win. Like yeah. I just wake up, woke up, and I was like, I'm gonna win this thing. And that was it. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I, I think that's that's also a testament to like the expanding your time horizons because like. I think of when I played football or just other competitions I've done fitness wise growing up, it was, it seemed like the end all be all. It's like, I, I need to win this. This is everything I'm training for. This is everything. Like, this is so important, but now it's just like a byproduct of the process when you're doing those competitions, I feel like. So this is just like, this Absolutely. is something that just pushed me a little bit more. It's just to have, like you said, like having that goal um, and, and like just having something to, to train for, but it's not the end all be all. It's just a part of the process. Yeah. Well, the the thing with that too and that this is my my fear for a lot of people these days is like not to dive or we can dive too much into it to your, to your show but it's like i feel like people are just weak these days yeah and what i mean by that is i was actually talking to my wife about this it's like nowadays it's like everybody gets a trophy and i i i i get why they want to do that like i get that but what does that do now it, it it removes the competition yeah and the competition does so much for the human body and the well, more importantly the human mind and i'm 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 not talking about like like if i don't get this life is over i'm talking about like a, a proper healthy dose of competition for sure like you know when I always look at it. It's like, I always make the reference like to my ancestors, you know, but it's like, I look at it. It's like, they, they've always had competition in some form or another. Yeah. And I feel like at a young age or growing up and that's not there in a healthy way. When you get to the real world, no one's there to help you. No one's there to like feed you this or that. Like the only person that's going to save yourself is yourself. Yeah. And that's what, in my opinion, competition helps with that. You understand loss. You understand like metaphorically getting beating up and not getting what you want. Yeah. And that is my, in my opinion, a much more important lesson than getting what you want all the time. For sure. No, so I, I completely agree. And I, this is kind of a tangent from what you're saying, but th when you were talking, it just made me think of this in that, like, your training and what you're doing when you're working out, it, it almost trains you for life. Like it's oh. like we used to train for sport. Like if you grew up playing sports, like you're training for that. But I feel like when you grow up, whether you're an entrepreneur or you just have a nine to five job that you're trying to like kind of climb the corporate ladder, whatever you do for a living, it, it could even be other aspects of life and your relationships. I feel like you're training your mind to be stronger and you're training, oh, yeah. training all these disciplines. Um, and, and you're, it's like you're, as if you were training for a sport, but you're, you're just training for life. That's how I think about it at this point. That's exactly right. And this is why, like, I get so upset. Like, I really do get upset when I see people not take health and fitness seriously. No. And health and fitness literally makes you a warrior in life. It does. Health and fitness is literally the fuel that gets you through all the BS. 
It is the fuel that gets you through the long nights. It's the fuel that gets you through the crucial business decision that you have to make. Because physiologically, it's all the same. Like you said, training hard has you perform better when you actually need it. Yeah, yeah. And I just get upset when I see, especially kids nowadays. Like I've, I've, I've worked with, when I was earlier in my career, I worked with a lot of youth athletes. I always have a passion for kids. Um, and I, I really get upset when I see kids or when I see parents not having kids focus on a sport or health and fitness or whatever, some version of that. Yeah. And it's, it's, I'm, I'm fearful that in 20, 30 years, <laughs> what our culture is going to be. I know. Now. And so, you know, I'm not, you know, it's, no, but I, 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 was, yeah. I was having a conversation with my girlfriend recently. Cause sometimes, I mean, we don't know if we're going to have kids in the future, but like, sometimes we talk about that and, and we're like, you know, talking about what we would do to put our kids in sports and stuff like that. We were just talking about how much, like sports developed our character and and how much of a difference it can make in stuff outside of you know it has nothing to do with the sport it's not about like yeah. good in football or being a good cheerleader or like whatever yeah. you do but it's it just develops that so much character in that process and i feel like you can it's just really continue right. that on the rest of your life with with whatever you're training for and just have that mindset of like i'm doing this to develop my character for yeah. a profession to be better in all these different aspects of life so oh 100 percent like it like you said it, it builds it builds a character like really what it does it builds the discipline yeah and like we were talking about earlier like i like motivation is is rarely there these i'm, I'm not saying like i'm not saying that obviously there's things we can do to elevate dopamine so i totally get that but when we look at motivation motivation i feel like it's kicked in for two different ways one you see a potential for yourself that changes your life. You know, okay, I see myself 50 pounds lighter. I'm building all this. Or for me right now, it's like I, for my business, where I, I see the motivation in that. But if we understand on the journey, motivation kicks in when you feel like you're on the right path. And many times you may not feel like you're on the right path. So you can't rely on that motivation. Yeah. You have to rely on just the, the skills, the discipline, the getting up at 5 a.m., 6 a.m. every day, going to bed when you should, instead yeah. of just staying up late, watching TV, this and that, you know, and then it, it, it's, from there, everything goes out the window. But it's like, that is what helps. That's what it does. It, it builds the discipline because motivation is rarely there. Discipline's oh, yeah. always there. Like, yeah. I, I rely on discipline more than anything else. And it's when you, when you say like the sport as a kid, I remember being young and going to karate class. I remember being young and my parents taking me to tennis lessons. I remember as a college kid, like literally in February, running through snow for rugby. Like that is what I remember that kicks in for me to put on my shoes, to get out of bed. Yeah. You know, so it's like, I, I, I really think every kid, every human on this planet should be doing some sport, some, you know, competitive thing, health and fitness, whatever it is, but you know, it, it's, it's what creates an effective human. For sure. <laughs> and, and now I'm getting nostalgic, but not, I'm, I'm thinking back, like just in school and just thinking about like, maybe I was like super stressed for like testing um, or, or like just whatever's going on in school and life, you know, whatever <laughs> nonsense girlfriend stuff I had back then, but just like going into a sport or going to work out after school for that sport, it, it's just like all that stuff gets erased and you you don't have to think about anything for a couple of hours or, like, or an hour yeah. or two. Right. And, and yeah. that's like, I don't know what I would do if I didn't have that in my life because seriously, yeah, I like there's days. I, I have to separate myself from work. I'm like, I literally, I'm going to go insane and rip someone's head off <laughs> if I don't go get this work out. Like, I don't, and yeah. I, I don't know how other people don't do that. Um, and I, I think they just don't realize how much better they'd feel if they did take that time for themselves and kind of fill their cup back up. But oh, yeah. absolutely. And I, I think it, 
is I, I truly do think it is a more of an ignorance type of thing. Yeah. Um, because I'm sure you've experienced when you start working with people, maybe after the first month, they're like, Man, I didn't realize it felt so shitty. <laughs> and until they stop feeling shitty, yeah. you know, it's like because I guess not, not to get too much in the conspiracy theories, but I I you look at our culture. And it's, it's conditioned us to stay down. So you look at, um, I, I drive down the highway and I see 20 billboards for fast food, uh, now drugs, marijuana, alcohol. Uh, I'm in Vegas, so you can let your mind run wild with that on the other advertisements you'd see. Yeah. But all that does what to us? It brings down our vibration. It makes us lazy. It, it fuels our addiction, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, and then if we really look at food, you know, fast food is, is so much more affordable and cheap compared to being healthy, you know, but it's, it's, we're conditioned so many times a day to stay on our phones, social media, uh, things that drain us instead of fueling us back up. So it's like, I really do believe that, you know, it's, I don't know how people, like you said, get through the day without something to, 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 to re-energize you or like to pull you away from the toxic yeah. out there. So yeah. I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll try to, we'll try to show people just over time. Exactly. <laughs> show them. Hey. At least it's job security, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna say it. Yeah. It is. I know. Like, our, what is it now? Our, we're it was a, there's a, a two thirds of our country is fat and obese, like overweight and obese. It's like, it's crazy. It's it's yeah, absolutely and, crazy. And you're right. So, like, thinking about the the future generations, I feel like it, yeah. I look at kids now, and I'm just like, what is going on? <laughs> it's insane. Just yeah. yeah. I feel like that. No, was and I remember what we just, you just said. Like, if you were to think about, you know, having kids, like I, I've had that conversation with my wife multiple times. Where like they have to do gymnastics because you need to know how to move your body. They have to do MMA, jujitsu, and boxing. Like they have to. So those are the three mandatories, and they need have them do basic movement training two times a week. Yeah. You know, so that what's that five days right there. Okay. Maybe gymnastics are doing that another two days. So six days a week Yeah, uh, for a kid, they're doing something every day. That's great. Now they're built, they're, they're learning how to move their body. They, the reason I love MMA is because you said it, there is when you are in the midst of working out, doing whatever, you don't have time to think about your BS. Right. When I'm, when I'm getting choked out or getting punched in the face, you think I have time to think about X, Y, and Z in my business? I don't. Yeah. My heart rate's going crazy. That's why I do boxing two times a week. Like yeah. it's just, it's that time where I can just focus on me, focus on surviving. And that, that builds the mind. So it's like for our kids, that's like gymnastics, strength training, movement training, speed and agility, and MMA. That's awesome. There we go. You're going to have some crazy little Feinbergs beating up little kids and stuff. No. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but you know, it's like, I, maybe I'm an extreme when I look at it, but it's, it's life is life can be very, very beautiful at times. And I think about all the experiences and the people that I meet. And I'm, I, I truly feel like I'm, I'm blessed. Like, cause I totally get it. Like some people, do not have it in the great. And that's my point. It's like life can be brutal if you let it, but how, how do you, how do you build yourself for it besides education, which is obviously very important learning skills, but how do you fuel that? Yeah. You, you got to train your body. So it's like for my kids, um, I'll let, I'll let my wife handle like the mindset and education side of things. But for the physical side, it's like, you got to have this, you got to have that, you got to do So it just prepares you for life. 100%. Man, and I meant to bring this up <clears throat> on another point you made earlier, but Andrew Huberman talked about this on a recent podcast he did with Chris Williamson. 
um, where there's like a part of your brain that literally doing hard things, like you can actually train your willpower like a muscle. Like it's proven that you can actually train your willpower just like a muscle and it does get stronger. So I think that's That's... a, a common misconception that people don't really realize a lot of people think like, okay, willpower is exhaustible. I hear people say that like it's an exhaustible resource, but you can actually train it to, to be able to handle more. So I think that, that relates to what we're saying even more where you literally can like train yourself for life because when you're doing these hard things and you're training your body, you're, you're literally improving your willpower to be able to handle lots of other different aspects of your life. So absolutely. And it's like, I've, I really look at, I would now say, you know, when you asked me in the beginning, what are some new things I'm focused on? It's actually, um, I would say that is what I'm really focusing on a lot more now. So it's like, when I get up, I have my, my morning, everybody talks about their morning routine. Um, What I think is an effective morning routine is it can be done in a short amount of time that sets you up for the later part of the day. I hate seeing these morning routines that take three or four hours. Yeah. And it's like, no, no, that kind of just defeats the purpose. But my point with this is my morning routine, when I'm getting up at 3, 3.30 a.m., the first 20 minutes are the hardest things I have to do in the day. Mm-hmm. I am literally first thing in, um, I've jumped right into the cold shower and I literally go there as long as I can. I'm actually doing reach outs at like 4 a.m. because I hate doing it. Like I hate, I I love sales, but I hate reaching out. So I'm like doing morning reach outs. um, And then I do my workout like at four, five, at this point, it's like 5.30, 6 a.m. So by the time 7, 7.30 rolls around, by the time people are waking up, I've done the hardest things I have to do in my day. And that may sound extreme, but I don't want to be that person that is just floating along in life. Right. That's not what I want. Yeah. And so for me, it's like, that's what I look at as like an awesome morning routine. It's like, get the hard shit out of the way first, whatever that is for you. So, Yeah, definitely. And that's, that's something I've seen as a recurring theme with, I've seen interviews with super successful people and they talk about like putting your top three to do's at the beginning of the day. Yep if you're executing on those like needle moving things, like if you do that every day, you're, you're going to level up and you're just going to be executing and and doing well. Yeah. And then, and then you talk about motive. You want to feel motivated when, when you get to the end of the day and you're laying in bed, whether, whether you have a bedtime routine or not, what you can't deny is if you got those things done in the morning, you look back and you're like, okay, I feel accomplished. For sure. Like I did it. That, that is what's going to like you on motivation. That's what's going to get you motivated. Yeah. And then, and then, like you said, you start conditioning your mind to be like, okay, I can do this stuff that seems impossible or that I can't do, or it's hard, whatever it is, whatever we're labeling it as. Yeah. So it's like, you want motivation, do it in the morning, get it done. <laughs> and then when you're like, oh, I did it. You're going to feel motivated. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. And it's like, if, if you feel like you suck at what you're trying to do and you're not getting things done, that's going to be demotivating, right? If you just feel like you're not making progress, I think that's a big part of being motivated. Like if you feel like you're making progress and you're getting better, yeah. you're probably going to feel motivated. So yeah. that's, that's a good, oh, absolutely. And, and it's, it's, that's so important because, um, when we, when we were literally talking about before we got on here with like the marketing, and it's like the first couple of months, there was like no progress. And I was just like, I remember you saying how, how demotivated. And it's like, I think where a lot of people make mistakes sometimes is either not know how to track the progress or what's appropriate progress. And that is obviously comes in with per- perception or getting help or learning this or that. But that's a big deal. Like actually seeing the progress and then rewarding yourself for the progress, whether it's just acknowledgement or like, a, I love what Hubert says, like a random intermittent reward. Um, that is some of the best ways to keep up motivation and the dopamine and all the feel good hormones. Yeah. It, on the topic of progress, because I wrote, I wrote down a quote that you actually had on Instagram. It's the scale only measures weight, not worth or wellness find deeper metrics. 
So what all do you measure and what do you measure with your clients to, to keep them motivated um, and, and like to pay attention to the right metrics? Yeah, yeah, that that is a really good question. Um, I'll first say it can be different from client to client, which I, I, as you know, um, but there's when I, I first measure what is like tangible. So in this sense, weight can be that, it, especially if someone's like, I want to lose body fat um, or even gain muscle. But as you know, you can lose body fat a lot faster than building muscle. So it's having the right expectations or the right uh, type of measurable data. Yeah. But then that's like one piece of the data, the progress. Um, what I really start to try to measure and, and really pay attention to is um, really good, just kind of like how you're feeling energy. Um, uh, like, but more importantly, um, what am I trying to say? Uh, performance in the weight room, like yeah. in the gym, yeah. uh, you're running or you're biking, like measuring that yes. in addition to what the number says on the scales. Uh, on the scale also looking at self-image like self-worth like yeah. how does that change as your body get gets better yeah and really measuring like what you're saying to yourself which can be done through journaling so um you know if, if uh, many a common theme with working with individuals especially who's trying to lose body fat and I'm very confident you'll agree with this. There's always a negative self image on them. Hell, I know I'm not fat, but I still at times have a negative self image. So it's, it's really being human, yeah. but acknowledging that in the beginning. And it's like, okay, we understand that. I understand that as a view on yourself. And then as we go through the process, really seeing how that changes. But what I, can tell you is that in all honesty, that view on yourself may never go away, but it's how fast can you recognize it and cause something new? So it's like, you know, if, if it's like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm fat, I'm out of shape or I'm, I'm not worth it or I'm ugly, whatever it is, it's being able to, okay, I can hear myself saying that what's something new I can say instead. Yeah. And what I have noticed is when clients do journal and they do do gratitude and accomplishments maybe at the end of the night or the beginning of the morning that changes you know yeah. that you can catch yourself faster because let's be real that negative talk sometimes never goes away that it's part of being human yeah but what we can cause and be aware of is like okay i hear myself saying that what's something i can put instead at a faster rate at a, at a greater rate you know, so when you look in the mirror, you're like, damn, I look good. <laughs> you know, so it's like, that's, that is what I believe is needs to be measured yeah. when someone is on this journey. That's really good. Yeah. That's, and how do you, how, is that like a question you ask them along the way? Like, how do you measure that? So honestly, you could do it real time right now where it's like, if, if whoever's listening, you know, you want to, you want to pick a time or a moment that um, when you, when you think of when those thoughts kick in. So for many people, maybe it's just looking in the mirror for some people, maybe it's just like trying to get to the gym or the thoughts of going to the gym. Um, or even, you know, for you, man, it's like thinking like, where's an area in your life that you maybe don't feel as confident about. It could be whatever, you know? And then it's like, okay, what, what are you saying? What are those emotions? What are you feeling? So Real time with me, um, not to get vulnerable or anything, but I, my entire life, um, and this could have been from diabetes, but whenever I, like, I have body dysmorphia, like I'll be the first to admit it, no matter how lean I get, no matter how big I get. And I would say this is very common with people working in fitness. Yeah. I always see this pale, curly redhead fat kid. And I see that because as growing up, I was a little bit chubbier. Um, I wasn't 
overweight, but I, I definitely wasn't like compared to my friends at a younger age, they were like rail thin. And I always thought that was like, that's how I should look. So I always see that. And I hear like, I don't matter. I'm not good enough. You're broken. Those are the common things that come into my head. And so what that does for me, if I don't address that, let's say that pops up in the middle, of, you know, when I wake up in the morning, that could be a foundation for the rest of the day. And the problem is where it's like a ninja, it just sneaks in there. And then you're wondering why maybe you don't feel so great, why you have anxiety or whatever it is. Um, but then I, 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 I see that and I say, okay, that is one way of thinking. I understand that. I may not have control over that coming in the moment, but what I now have control over are my next thoughts. Mm -hmm. So then it's be like, no, I'm this six foot four, 235. Right now, I think I'm at about 10, 12% body fat. Um, you know, Viking that's literally going to take on and throw hundreds of pounds around this. So it's like, I put in who I want to be, yeah. not who I, not what my paradigm or my consciousness says that I am. Yeah. And sometimes I have to say it over and over and over again until I finally believe it. And so that's really like real time, what you can do. And in the beginning, I always recommend writing it down first, because you can get it out of your head. Sure. And then I'll say like, okay, what, what am I grateful for? Well, I'm grateful for, I have a roof over my head. I'm doing what I love. I'm grateful for, and then I make it about me. I'm grateful for myself in, you know, lifting a shit ton of weight, or it, it can be the most little things. It doesn't have to be this profound thing, but that's what I always have. I always try to have people do to snap themselves out of it. And then it's just, just like anything, you just got to do it day after day after day. It's not just one thing that happens and goes. It's just like it's just like training in the gym. Yeah. You, you got to you got to hit dumbbell bench press multiple times to finally get better at it. You know, so yeah. that's that's what I would say. I like that, man. Yeah, journaling has had such a profound impact on my life, and I I've tried to get so many of my clients into the habit, and I I think it can be absolutely transformative for people. Um, and it, it's crazy how such I think it's the it's the easiest task that you can do that makes like such a big difference. So I completely agree. Um, it's, it's insane how powerful writing something in your head, getting it out of there, both, both negative and positive can be, it's, it's unbelievable. And you're right. It's literally anyone can do it. Like, literally after this just go journal and I, it would probably have probably one of the most profound impacts on you that day yeah it's unbelievable yeah well th there's your challenge for people because i usually ask <clears throat> like what what's one challenge i guys like start your journaling habit and yeah you know, probably by the time this comes out it's gonna be almost 2024 i challenge you to just like start journaling for one to two minutes per day this year like and just see how much your life changes in 2024 like it, it can be so would, yeah i would even take that a step further what i would challenge is write down who you really want to be like yeah. when you and think I, about standing at the end of 2024 who do you really want to be what do you really want to have and write that every day yeah and i guarantee i it's not even like it might happen i guarantee you you will put yourself in the right direction to get there yeah. because eventually your brain starts, to, your, your subconscious starts to believe you. Mm -hmm. And that's the point of it. There's, you know, there's the consciousness and the subconsciousness, and there's this gate in between. And you may have an idea that comes in like, Oh, I want to lose 20 pounds. And then your subconscious is like, you can't, you can't do it. You have all this data showing that you suck. And I, what, happens is you need to align the two and what does that one way to do that is by writing and journaling it brings the two together yeah. so i challenge every like write down who you really want to be what you really want to have by end of 2024 yeah. and you journal that every day i would be very shocked if people didn't get there yeah i just wanted and, and just like you said earlier <clears throat> make it 
that you are that person. Like, don't say I am going to be because the universe like doesn't know what to do with that. It's like, I am this person. You, you can literally write down, like if, you're, if your goal is 20 pounds lighter than what you are and you're 200 pounds, you can be like, I am 180 pounds. So you can write that down every day. Yeah. And by the end of the year, you'll be there. Because I actually talked with a psychologist I had on, on one of my podcasts and I told him what I was writing down every day. And I said, uh, I'll go ahead and say it. I was saying, I will be the most impactful online fitness coach. And he was like, no, you need to write, I am yeah. the most impactful yeah. online fitness coach. And, and yeah. I literally started writing that instead. And it, yes, because yeah. your brain is going to, it's going to already start to believe that you are that person. If you're doing that every day, like you said, the subconscious is going to take over. Um, or, well, you can... it, it, it really is because when you, and then obviously there's, there's always people like, oh, that sounds woo woo. It's like, okay, well, let's look at the science of it. Yeah. Every cell vibrates at a certain frequency. Okay. We can't, we can't deny that. We know that for a fact when we have a, and this, what we also can't deny is that this controls everything, both consciously and subconsciously. So, so our autonomic, okay, and then our central nervous system. When we look at information that is coming through, if we are talking to ourselves in a negative way, it's going to turn down the vibration. And that gets filtered out through the rest of the body. So how does that impact our actions? Well, you know, I'm just going to stay in today. Uh, I'm feeling, you know, I'm, I'm just not going to go to the gym. You know, I'll, I'll start tomorrow. When you start telling yourself, like you're saying, I am, if like, if you're losing, want to lose 20 pounds, I am 180 pounds. In the beginning, you're going to laugh because it's not believable. But you do that for week after week after week, that vibration starts to turn up. And when that turns up, you're going to be like, you know what? I am going to go to the gym. You know what? I'm going to put away the donut. I am going to push a little bit harder. It's yeah. still going to suck, yeah. but you're you're going to be more, again, motivated to yeah. do it. So it's not woo-woo. It's literally the, how the brain and the body works. Right. So that's, that's where it's like, that's why it's magical. Because you literally can get whatever you want in life. You can. Yeah. yeah you, and, just, and you have to get this and your actions in alignment. That's yeah. it. Dang, you, you, I was just about to say that. And you said it the last little sentence there, the alignment, because then you're wanting to live in alignment with what you're saying you are, right? Because, because you're just going to have that natural inkling to, to be in alignment with what you're writing yourself as every single day. So you're going to start being more motivated, like you said, to get there. So, and that, and that goes back to the very first thing I said here. That's why I picture the 80 year old version of myself. Yeah. Cause he is in full alignment. He is standing there white hair blazing, you know, he fully chiseled, you know, he's in alignment. I'm not there yet. And I'm the first to admit that I'm getting there. I'm building that, but he is. Yeah. And that's, that's what gets me up in the morning. I love it, man. <laughs> well, I know you're probably feeling the pre-workout that you drank right before we started recording. <laughs> I know you're about to love it. get a workout in. So um, we can go ahead and finish this one here, but I'm in. I feel like every time we talk now, it's I've got so many other questions that I wrote down, but we just have such good chats. Let's we do another to... one, maybe sometime next year. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll be a you can be like a pseudo co-host and sure. be re recurring on here. So awesome, man! But <laughs> where where can we send people to find your your content and everything? Instagram is always a great spot. Uh, Brad Feinberg eighty eight. I am pushing a little bit more on TikTok and YouTube okay. now. So um, TikTok's the same. Um, YouTube is the Feinberg method. Okay. Uh, and then my website, the Feinberg method.com. Awesome. Well, awesome, brother. Well, I love the chat, man. Guys, no, thank take you. this stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Put this value that Brad is spitting, put it into action right away. Again, on the Elevate Everyday podcast, it's about putting it into action. Don't just listen, put this stuff into place in your life. Okay. So subscribe for expert guests and fitness content inspiration like this every single week. I'll see you guys in the next video. And in the meantime, elevate every damn day. Peace. Elevate. Only obligation is to tell it straight.